Hi guys, um, I'm just uh, giving it a minute or two while some people are, are coming on because I can see we're, we're starting to get a couple on. Um, we're going to go through today, or I'm going to go through some uh, some nutrition stuff. I'm going to try and keep it pretty straightforward and as practical as possible. So rather than going massively in depth, what I want to kind of do is give you guys the tools to put together um your own meal plan or certainly to have a look at your nutrition a little bit more analytically and be able to be able to do that with a little bit more knowledge as to um, what it should and shouldn't be looking like really. So rather than explaining to you why um, certain things, obviously if you've got questions along the way feel free to, to chuck them in there and I'm happy to answer those uh, as we go but it's more about um, like I say giving you the the plan uh, and the, the information so that you can put together your own uh, meal plan or, or analyse your, your current meal plan. Um, to start with, when uh, you're first looking at organising your nutrition, the first thing that you need to do is have a look at um, what your, your calorie intake needs to be to support your goal. Um, now, the important thing with that is that it needs to support your goal. People often come to me and like, oh, okay, I, I'm eating X amount, is that enough? Well, it depends. It depends on what you want to do. Um, you know, do you do you want to be the world's strongest man because the likelihood is you're not eating enough? Do you want to lose 10 kilos of body fat because the likelihood is you either are eating enough or maybe you're eating a little bit too much? Um, and most of us that are uh, on this group are training uh, as athletes and people that want to improve in sport. Uh, and in my experience, the majority of people that fit that bracket tend to under eat. Um, so it's a matter of making sure that we're eating enough to support our training uh, and making sure that we're uh, being able to recover from that training optimally. Um, so how do we do that? What does that look like? There's a couple of different formulas out there, but the first thing that you need to do is to calculate what's called your BMR, which stands for your basal metabolic rate. Um like I said, there's a couple of formulas out there and there's loads of calculators online on Google or whatever. Um, if you literally just type in BMR calculator, that you'll be able to do that. Um, they'll be able to, to find something for you. Um, or if you're a bit old school like I am, you can ch plug it all into an equation. There's two that are the, probably the more accurate and uh, most common, commonly used uh, equations, which are uh, the mifflin St. Uh equation and the Harris-Benedict formula. Um, so I'm going to use the, the Mifflin, um, just for this example, just because the maths is a little bit easier to be honest. Um, and if the maths is easier, then it makes my life a little bit easier when I'm drawing examples. So if I can, I think I can flip the screen on here. Aha, uh -huh, good. Okay. So we can see BMR, this is the Mifflin uh, equation is equal to 9.99 times W, which stands for your weight in kilograms, plus 6.25 multiplied by your height in centimetres, minus 4.92 multiplied by your age in years. And then the only difference between men and women is that after you've got that figure, for men, we add five, and for women, we take away uh, 161 okay so when we look at that equation and break that down um you you need to know three things so you need to know your age your height and your weight um so if anyone's ever trying to give you advice on your calorie intake and they don't ask you for those three things the likelihood is that they're plucking numbers out of thin air or just basing it on uh, experience or you know what their mates done or something like that okay so um so it is important your weight does play a factor in it your height does play a factor in it and so does your age in, in terms of our metabolic rate and, and calculating that bmr the second thing we're going to do then once we've got that number is we're going to multiply it by what we call an activity level um there's a couple of different ways of doing this. The, the most basic way is the way I try and keep it as simple as possible. But basically, it's 1.2 uh, for sedentary people that don't train at all, that are, you know, desk jobs and, you know, less than 5,000 steps a day. Don't do any sort of training or anything like that. I know that's not going to be any of you guys that are watching this. 
1.4 for people that maybe train one to three times a week, casual trainers, but have pretty inactive jobs and inactive lifestyles. 1.6 for people with slightly more active lifestyles and that train a bit more frequently, something like three to six times a week, um, or they train three times a week and they've got a pretty active job. Uh, 1.8 for people that train pretty much every day. Uh, and or have a, a very active job and train regularly and then two for what I consider to be people that want to be pro uh, athletes or that want to be um, they want to treat this as their sport um, so you calculate your BMR uh, and then you multiply that by either 1.2 1.4 1.6 1.8 .1 or 2 based on where you are on that spectrum I'll just show you that on here again so we've got calculating our bmr there and then to get our calories we multiply by 1.2 for sedentary 1.4 for one to three times a week 1.6 for three to six 1.8 for six to 12 and then two for your professional athletes and that will give you your calories for that day now this again is very generic very basic but it's a, a good starting point to give you guys an idea of where you need to be um, that there will be your total number of calories that you should be aiming to hit um, daily. Um, the big thing with the that number is that that will change as well, depending on your output and how you're responding to that. So if you feel like you're under recovering, you're losing weight, weight's a really good way of, of determining if you're under or overeating, by the way. Um, so like if, if you're um, not sure that you're eating enough, and you change your calories to a certain amount, say you're upping your calories by 250 calories or something like that, uh, and your weight is staying the same, then that means you can probably up them a little bit more because you're actually, that those extra calories that you're eating are going towards improving performance or recovery or both. Um, if, you're, if you up those 250 calories and then suddenly your weight is starting to increase um, or dramatically increasing, then the likelihood is that you're overeating those calories slightly and you need to taper that down. So you've either, uh, you've probably overestimated your activity level. And with those 1.2, 4, 6, 8, uh, or 2s, you can go in between that. So say you're you're somewhere in between and you want to do maybe 1.7, that's absolutely fine as well. That just comes with a little bit of jigging around. It's not an exact science. So we've then got our number of calories. Okay, so once we've got our number of calories, what do we do with that then? Well, the first thing that I suggest that we do is we then calculate the amount of protein that we need to be um, eating. So your number of protein uh, grams that you should be eating daily uh, is anywhere in a range. Um, this is based on the science and the, and the, uh, the research that has gone into muscle development and all that other good stuff, or, or mainly to reduce muscle atrophy, you need to be looking at a minimum of 1.8 grams per kilo of body weight. Um, and we've seen benefits in eating anywhere up to 2.5 grams per kilo of body weight. So um, that's the range there, somewhere between 1.8 to 2.5. Anything over 2.5 grams per kilo of body weight in terms of protein, you're probably not going to be seeing a massive benefit in terms of protein synthesis, in terms of uh, improved recovery or vice versa. Although there have been some studies that have shown that higher protein uh, intake has had, it, has, had, has had other benefits. But you want to be somewhere in that range. I always tend to think that if we're doing heavy resistance training, which most of the guys on this program are, then we want to be on the higher end of that range. So I'd normally put people at between 2.2 to 2.5 grams of protein per uh, per kilo of body weight as a as a starting point, and then an analyze that based on their recovery and and so on and so forth. So I'll just show you that how we've got it here. We've got. Once you've calculated your calories, then your protein will equal your body weight multiplied by somewhere between 1.8 to 2.5. And it says there then multiply by four because there are four calories for every gram of protein that we eat. So this is the important thing to consider that um, every gram of protein we eat has four calories. Every gram of carbohydrates we eat has four calories. And then every gram of fat that we eat uh, has nine calories and this is part of the reason why fat became um, victimized in terms of cutting fat was the best way to lose body weight or lose fat because they considered it to be a, a 
it was more calorie dense. Um, that's not necessarily true because cut, fat is essential for so many things in terms of hormone production, recovery, and loads of other good stuff as well, depending on the fats you're choosing. So, um, but that's just a reason why low fat diets became so important um, or so prevalent uh, a, a little while back. So what happens then with the remaining calories is that um, we can then divvy those up between carbohydrates and fats. So um, there's a couple of ways of doing this. And it's from an aesthetic point of view, it doesn't matter. I'll say that again, from an aesthetic point of view, it doesn't matter. So when you listen to people like James Smith um, going on about, you know, calories in versus calories out is all that matters. That's what they're talking about. They're talking about aesthetics and they're normally talking about dropping or gaining body fat. They're not talking about performance or anything else. So um, you could split that any way you like in terms of, you know, 50, 50, 60, 40, 40, 30, uh, sorry, 70, 30, uh, 80, 20, either way. Uh, and aesthetically, it won't matter as much in terms of uh, body fat increase or decrease. What I would, as long as you're getting enough protein in, what I would say is that if you are training uh, for CrossFit for performance, then what we want to do is skew towards being carbohydrate heavy just because what we're doing is a glycolytic sport. So the more carbohydrates that we can get, the better um, without overeating in terms of calories. So um, I would normally have three realms on this, and this would totally depend on what what your preferences are because the best diet is the one you can stick to right so if you're somebody that eats a lot of fat and you like a lot of fat then to start with i'd try and get you 50 50 percent in terms of calories from fats and calories from carbohydrates on uh, based on what's left over after you've taken away that protein um and then edge you towards maybe 60 40 carbs to uh, fats but I, I've had people and I've had athletes on as much as 80, 20 carbohydrates to fats, um, as long as they're getting enough fat in to support recovery, to support hormone um, development and all that other stuff, then they're going to see good benefits in terms of energy levels from that and making sure that there's sustained energy and insulin sensitivity and all that other good stuff. So just to show you that on our, my little whiteboard. So what we're looking at there is calories remaining then. Carbohydrates, there's four calories per gram and there's nine calories per gram of fats. And we can split that 50, 50, 60, 40, 75, 25, something like that. But I would never really, from an athlete point of view, go any further than uh, a maximum of 50% of those calories, excess extra calories coming from fats, okay? So that's the theory behind um, calculating how many calories we need and then calculating your macros. OK, so some people will find they work better on higher fats, higher carbs, ratios, whatever that might be. And that comes with experimentation that comes with with um, figuring out how your body works and how you deal with certain um, certain food groups. And, and at certain times, certain nutrient timing as well. Now, this is something that I used to do a lot of. And it's something that fee um, does a lot of now in terms of helping people with their nutrition through the athlete program. So if you want to sign up for uh, a personalized um nutrition plan then fee will go through all of this with you organize all of your numbers for you and then put something together to fit those those numbers specifically and tweak things as you go okay energy levels are going uh, down a little bit we need to increase our carbohydrates okay body fat's increasing a little bit we need to de decrease our calories and so on and so forth okay so let's have a look at this uh, in terms of uh, an example and how we would we put it all together. So I'm going to use myself as an example, just because I can do the maths and I've done it before. So it's, it's relatively straightforward for me. What I'm going to do is talk you through the board as we go. So first things first, I need to calculate my BMR. So my BMR is 9.99 multiplied by my weight, which is 91 kilos, which works out at uh, 909-ish. We're then going to, uh, let's draw that on there as we go, make that easier. So that's 909. We're then going to add 6.25 multiplied by my height in centimetres, which is 178 centimetres. So that works out at 1112.5. And then I'm going to take away 4.92 multiplied by my age, 
which is, I'm 32, so that's 157.4. And then uh, I'm going to add 5 because I'm a man. So doing all of that maths quickly, that is 1869-ish calories. That's my basal metabolic rate. Now, don't think for a second that that's all I'm eating in calories because it's not. That's my basal metabolic rate. Now, what I need to do then to figure out my calories is to multiply that by, for me, it's two because I want to CrossFit is my sport. I'm training to get better. I'm tra training for performance and I'm trying to be as good as I can in the sport. So multiply that by two. Quick maths is 38738. Okay. Um, so that is the number of calories that I am in and around each day, which is about right. That's pretty much what I'm eating at the moment. So I then get those calories. And what I'm going to do is figure out how much protein. I need to eat. So my protein, I, I always go on the upper end, so I'm going to multiply by uh, 2.5 here. So what I'll do is I will uh, multiply my body weight, which is, again, I said is 91 kilos by 2.5. So that is 227.5 um, grams of protein per day. Now, if I multiply that by four, then I figure out how many calories I'm eating of protein. So in cals, that equals 910. 910 calories. So I should wipe this off here now to figure out my carbs and my fats. So I know I've got, I've eaten 910 calories of my 3,738 calories from protein. So what I need to do then is go 3,738 minus 910 equals 2,828 cals left over. So that's what I've got left, okay? Um, for me, I used to eat more fats and less carbs so i'm working my way towards um that higher carbohydrate ratio for so for me personally i'm on around about uh 60 40 carbs to fats so if i then multiply that for my carbs by times 0 0.6 for my carbohydrates that's 60 percent of that that is one six nine seven something like that um calories from carbohydrates and then times 0.4 for my fats is 1132 cals give or take um in calories and fats now remember there's four gram uh, four calories per gram of carbohydrates and nine calories per gram of um of fats so if i divide this by four and divide this by nine then i'll get my total number of grams of each carbohydrates and fats so that's four two four and that's one two six grams of carbs of fats so there i can figure out based on my BMR and my uh, activity level, I can figure out my calories. And then from that, I can figure out how much protein in grams I need to be eating uh, and how many carbohydrates and how many fats in grams I need to be eating. So that's like a, a good ballpark figure of where I want to be. Okay, so what I did, um, I'm relatively intuitive with my food because i've been tracking food for a very long time um longer than most of you guys have even been doing crossfit or tracking food for so this is today's food for me um so breakfast i have a 
whey protein shake. This is just a bulk powders, generic whey protein um, that I get for the moment. I also have uh, complete fruits and greens in that shake. So it's like a bit like muddy water, but there's a lot of antioxidants, lots of vitamins and minerals in there. Um, I have, I've just put universal animal pack there because I take multiple different vitamins on there. And I know that uh, everything that I take is covered in that animal pack. And that's pure farmer omega-3, where actually I do take omega-3 zone uh, omega-3 but it's the same calorie value and they're not on there so um that there my breakfast you can see is 218 calories that's the first thing out of bed really is low carb low fat just high protein um just to because i don't like eating first thing in the morning um training nutrition this is actually two separate meals but i split it up pre and post training um and i put my lunch in the wrong bracket here but that's like my, my pre and post recovery uh, and fuel as well in terms of supplements so my training nutrition i eat uh, swiss style muesli which is like alpen uh, sugar free um with almond milk and blueberries um and i split that in half so i have uh, 150 grams pre-training with 300 mil of milk almond milk um and 100 grams of blueberries uh pre-training and i also have my kratos fuel um i then have another 150 grams of muesli post training with uh with blueberries and then my kratos recovery so you can see there that's a good chunk of my calories for the day eating around my training and certainly a good chunk of my carbohydrates there's 210 grams of carbs there around my training and that's not by accident enough protein as well i'm getting 50 grams of protein a little bit of fat but a, a good chunk of my carbohydrates probably yeah, it's nearly almost bang on half my carbohydrates for the whole day, uh, either side of my, my big morning training session. Lunch then, I have a relatively light lunch, which is some cheese and turkey uh, and some greens, some, some vegetables. Um, that's got my supplements in there as well, remember. So that there's got um, 60 grams of, of protein, uh, sorry, 60 grams of carbs, um, 90 grams of protein and uh and 18 grams of, of fats so again that's a, that's a good chunk of protein taken post workout um which is going to help in terms of recovery as well uh snacks this is actually like my my lunch i guess whereas uh that's ju it's just the way it, it works on my fitness palm i pr uh, batch cook a big turkey stew um which is chicken thighs uh carrots sweet parsnips chicken stock and onions um tastes pretty good and again you get a good whack of of carbohydrates but it's all good carbs it's all coming from root vegetables um again 45 grams of protein 18 grams of fats all animal fats good healthy fats uh dinner then i batch cook again i've got two slow cookers uh, a turkey chili um which is turkey mince some chorizo brown onion plum tomatoes red peppers uh some fajita seasoning um and then i have that with a bag of uh, of steamed rice brown rice um which is 250 grams good chunk of rice and that's uh my evening meal and then before bed because i need more carbohydrates um to, for the day uh i have some crumpets so that's what i've got later on is uh two crumpets just with some lure pack and um and some marmite um marmite just because i like it and it's got a bit of protein in it as well and then um yeah basically you can see so this is off my my protein is giving me these these calorie goals and everything else i've not um updated those i'm just using this as an example so what i said what i wanted was what 3738 calories and what am i getting today 3800 pretty much bang on i'm 60 calories out um in terms of protein 2 uh, 227 grams i'm probably a bit over i normally eat a lot of protein so yeah 277 grams that's way over so i'm about 50 grams too much protein but if you're going to overeat on anything then uh, then protein's the one to do um in terms of uh the thermogenic effect of food it'll help you with that um and then we've got 424 grams of carbs where am i at 434 it's not bad 10 grams out and then 126 grams of fat well i'm going to be under that because i'm over on the protein so 109 grams of fat so i'm about 15 grams of fat short so considering i sort of know where i want to be that's not too bad you know these numbers that i'm calculating calculating up on that board are um 
are guidelines of somewhere I want to be. I think as long as you are getting enough protein and enough calories, um, like I said, if you have a particularly high carb day or a particularly uh, high fat day, um, then as long as everything else is sort of on a on a swivel. So say if I have a high fat day, my carbohydrates come down and my calories stay where they need to be in and around sort of ten percent. That's fine. Same vice versa. If I have a high ca- carb day. I have a slightly lower fat day um, as long as I'm in and around where I want to be in terms of calories and that protein I keep hitting where I need it to be. Um, so that hopefully gives you a good idea of how to calculate what you need in terms of calories, um, how then to calculate what you need in terms of macros and then what that should look like in practicality. Now, this is obviously I've been doing this for years and years and years, and it's taken a while to get right in terms of. Um, where I need to be in and in certain parts of the season I might increase my carbohydrates as I'm leading up to a competition for instance and start lowering my fats um, is I, if I'm in off season and I'm looking to get a little bit stronger and I'm looking for some testosterone development and stuff like that I might increase my fats and lower that carbohydrate down or increase my calories in general because I'm trying to build some muscle um, so it's all dependent on where you're at during that season but something to consider uh, and hopefully this will give you an idea in terms of uh, give you some tools to um, to help you calculate those calories, those macros, and give you an understanding of what it means when somebody says, you know, what are your macros or whatever. Um, hopefully, that has been at least a little bit useful um, for some of you guys. Um, if anyone's got any questions about anything that I've just gone over there, then obviously please feel free to ask um, and I'll uh, I'll go over those with you now. But um, otherwise, feel free to drop me a message or to check out the nutrition plans on, um, on the website, uh, on the athlete program. So Fee does the nutrition plans and I've helped Fee and we've had a good couple of, good, good couple of chats about all this sort of stuff. She's really switched on and understands all this stuff really well and um, exactly what you need to be doing from that side of things. So um, give her a shout if uh, if you need any help with this or if it's anything just sort of generic, that's what this group is for. So chuck us a message on here or put something at open source about nutrition, about training, about whatever. And if we can help, then that is exactly what we'll do. Um, if there's no questions or anything, I've just realised I've been talking non-stop for half an hour, so hopefully you're not all too bored. Um, uh, 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 oh, here we go. Uh, what do you advise as a calorie deficit for weight loss? That depends. So um, if you've stayed the same weight uh, for a long period of time um, and your energy levels are decent you don't feel like lethargic or anything like that then likelihood is that you're pretty much at maintenance at the moment and uh, i use that term quite loosely but that means that you're relatively speaking burning as many calories as you're eating because you're not going up or going down in weight so i'd normally suggest around about um a 250 calorie deficit should normally see you losing around about a, a gram sorry a, a pound of body weight per week uh, half a kilo of body weight per week because if it, it works in reverse right so you think um there's there's nine calories for every gram of uh of fat so if we want to lose a kilo of fat then we need to lose nine thousand calories um because there's a thousand grams in a kilogram so if i need to lose nine thousand calories um if i did that across nine days then that would be uh, a th- a thousand calories a day um if i did that across 27 days then that'd be a third of that so 300 calories a day so yeah you're looking at like 300 calories a day you're going to look to lose about a kilo of fat in about a three-week period which i would suggest is a nice result you know a kilo of fat is a lot of fat to lose um in a nice steady controlled way because the problem you've got is you start under eating massively in calories and you go into a big deficit then the likelihood is your performance is going to suffer as well and you're likely to lose muscle mass as well as fat mass the holy grail for us is making sure that we're if we are trying to lose body fat that we're only losing body fat and we're not losing any muscle mass or strength along with that um and it is possible i've done it with people plenty of people and it's you know it's it's achievable but it's just a matter of making sure that you are eating enough protein or more than enough protein 
um, while cutting those calories. And don't think that you just need to cut fat. You don't. You need to cut calories, not fat, out of that diet um, if you're looking to, to lose weight. You say weight loss, I assume you mean fat loss um, because, you know, muscle mass, you're not going to lose any bone mass. Or we certainly hope not. Um, but muscle mass is important. We need to maintain that because that's what transfers across for our strength and our, our strength to power, uh, weight to power power to weight ratio as well um any other questions guys <laughs> no i think we're uh I think we're good. Okay, gang, well, we'll leave it there. So um, this is the first, obviously, um, sort of seminar, I guess, or we've talked about. Yeah, no problem, mate. Um, so uh, if you guys have got any other questions, then um, we'll try and uh, we'll try and answer those and try and help. Oh, hang on. Big Carl, main man. Uh, what do you recommend taking for hydration when training in the sun? Uh, first and foremost, make sure that you're drinking enough water, obviously, because um, that's the, the most important thing. But the other thing I would consider supplementing with is electrolytes. Um, so making sure that you're um, getting enough magnesium, potassium, calcium, uh, sodium, all of these salts that we lose through sweat. Um, I would also suggest, especially like it has been hot, that you supplement with zinc. Um, because we lose zinc through sweat and it's very important for testosterone production um, and general hormones. So I've actually got some of my Kratos recovery in here. This is not a plug, but there's electrolytes or in the recovery and there's also electrolytes in the fuel, um, Kratos fuel for that reason, because it's designed for sport, not for aesthetics. And we sweat a lot when we do CrossFit. So we need to repl replenish those um, those minerals that are lost as well as hydrating. Um, so, yeah, good question. Make sure you're drinking plenty of water throughout the day. Um, you know, minimum of two liters of water throughout the day. And that doesn't include um, teas and coffees or uh protein shakes or anything else like minimum two liters and then if you're having a good sweaty training session half hours worth of conditioning out in the sun and you're sweating a lot then you want to be replenishing that as you're training and directly afterwards so think about getting some electrolytes in during and post training as well good question reminds me What is your recommendation? Sorry, let me just see that. What is your recommendation for supplements like creatine, arginine, and other? Should they be taken, and how much of it? Um, yes. In short, creatine is a great supplement to take. Um, in terms of what we do, um, it's really it's a, uh, the most well researched um sports nutrition supplement there is um, and has been for years and years and the performance benefits are massive in terms of carry over to power carry over to strength um, carry over to uh, aerobic capacity um, anaerobic capacity more so um, my my three sort of go-to supplements in terms of performance would always be um, creatine better alanine and caffeine um, again you know, this isn't a plug, but in terms of what I put into the, the Kratos supplements, if you just Google um, Kratos Nutrition and, and check out on there and it tells you what's in each of those. I've developed these products because I think that they're exactly what we need for CrossFitters pre-workout and post-workout. So there's creatine in both. Um, in the pre-workout, there's caffeine. Um, you don't need other types of stimulants really. There's better alanine in terms of that lactic acid buffer. There's taurine to help improve um, oxygen transfer. Um, what else have we got? Uh, electrolytes like we talked about. Uh, in the, in the post-workout, you've got protein. Again, 
high quality whey protein, carbohydrates, which we talked about how important they are for replenishing glycogen stores, creatine, glutamine, HMB, um, all of these things that are designed to help improve recovery. Um, and as we said, you know, zinc and magnesium before bed. In terms of um, supplements for a health point of view, anyone that's been to one of my nutrition talks uh, on the athlete program training days will know this, but it's omega-3s, coenzyme Q10, uh, vitamin D3, uh, probiotics are the four main health supplements that I would recommend and anything else would depend on the individual themselves but those four would be ones that I would recommend to, to everyone um, that wants to sort of optimize health nutrition and, and balance hopefully that's answered your question Any more questions, guys? No problem at all. What's your thoughts on casein? So casein is... Um, slow release protein milk protein um in terms of um evaluating that in comparison to a whey protein it's negligible um the only people that i really recommend in terms of protein difference between you know a hydrolyzed and isolate uh, casein protein is rate of rate of rate of absorption um and that's kind of been debunked as long as you're getting enough protein throughout the day. So the, the whole uh, thing about protein supplements is that they are convenient ways of increasing our protein when most people struggle to eat enough protein, basically. So if you're getting enough protein in, it doesn't really matter what that source is and how slow or fast that source is digested. The difference between casein and a whey is when you ingest casein, it basically forms a gel in your stomach um, and it then gets digested like food rather than a uh, whey which is uh, water soluble then goes almost directly into your digestive system um, rather than having to be broken down. Um, so if you do want casein, um, then it's a lot cheaper to drink milk. If you're not lactose intolerant, if you have no issues with milk, um, then that would be a, a cheaper way of drinking some slow release protein. Skimmed milk would just take the, the sort of fat and everything else out of it. Um, or adding some skimmed milk to your protein shake. Um, so if you just bought whey and then added some milk to it, then you get two for the price of one. You've got whey, which is your fast digesting protein. And if you just add milk to it, then it does the same thing. And it will uh, make that a slower digesting protein. Joe, how often do you reevaluate your calories? For me, I do it every sort of six to eight weeks. I tend to do it. I, I eat the same thing pretty much every day. Um, so I tend to do it when I'm looking to change my nutrition. So if I change my nutrition, I'll do it, like I said, sort of every six to eight weeks or whatever. Um, so I'll, I'll eat pretty much chicken stew and turkey chili every day. Um, you know, my evening snack might change a little bit based on what I fancy or whatever. And I might get put some sweets in there or something, or some carbohydrates or something a bit different. Um, but that'll be that that's been me for the last four or five weeks and probably will be for the next two or three weeks. So it'll be about eight weeks worth of that. And then once I start getting bored of that, um, I'll then change that. I might keep one of the meals because I like it still. Um, and if I'm bored of the other one, then I'll swap that out and I'll reevaluate my calories when I do that. So I'll basically track my food for the first couple of days when I've changed my calories, I uh, changed my my meals to make sure that I'm in and around where I need to be um, and tweak things accordingly. Um, so, yeah, every every six to eight weeks um, for me, um, you could do it every four weeks. I've done it monthly with with clients in the past. It depends how easy you find eating the same sort of foods or how uh, intuitive you can be with your um, your nutrition, really, like how good you are at, at eyeballing calories. Most of us aren't very good at that. Uh, any plans or chance of a vegan-friendly version to the Kratos recovery? There's nothing in the pipeline for the recovery. I am working on a, um, a protein, uh, a vegan protein, um, which will be purely a, just a protein shake, um, which 
the problem that I'm sure you found with a lot of vegan shakes is because of the types of uh, protein sources in there they're quite earthy flavors and it just tastes they just don't taste great and they don't mix particularly well in general either um, awesome supplements I think is probably one of the best vegan proteins that I've tried and tested and tasted um, other than the one that I'm working on at the moment so it's going to take a little bit a little bit of time but it's um, it's going through testing and stuff at the moment and we're getting there there or thereabouts but there's not a plan for that to be a recovery that will just purely be protein um so what you could do to that is if you wanted to add some creatine um to that and some carbohydrates that would make it a good uh replacement for recovery um the yeah the protein source on um on kratos is uh, is hydrolyzed whey isolate so that is not vegan friendly unfortunately uh, most companies that fortify their vegan proteins with amino acids um, to bulk up the amount of leucine and other to make them complete protein sources they use raw amino acids from various sources which tend not to be vegan anyway um, but because they're raw amino acids they don't treat that as a non-vegan friendly option but that's just by the by something from inside the uh, um inside the industry um i'm not saying it all do that by the way just uh, i know of a couple so keep an eye on that in terms of how, if they're fortified with anything uh, what they're fortified with Yeah, no problem, guys. Uh, any more for any more? Any more questions, guys? Yeah, I'll let you know when it's out, Lou. Um, yeah, it's probably going to be four to six weeks, six. The way everything has been on go slow at the moment just because of uh, of COVID and everything else. So we were we were cooking on gas for some new products, but it's, uh, everything's pretty much stopped just um, in the factories and the, uh, the labs and stuff. So um, fingers crossed once we're allowed to go back in and uh, and get the ball rolling again. It'll be about four weeks from when we're allowed back in, so I'll uh, I'll keep you posted. Don't think I've missed any questions, guys. Uh, uh, uh. No, I think we're good. Okay, gang. Well, hopefully you guys have found that helpful. Um, thanks for thanks for joining in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the questions. Um, if you're watching this after the event and you've got any questions about anything that I've covered, um, either just plonk it on the video or uh, or drop us a message. Ideally, put it on the video or put it on the um, on the group because if you've got the question, then it, somebody else might have the same question. So rather than direct messaging me. If you ask the question, then uh, everybody gets the benefit of the answer if you put it on the group. So uh, hopefully uh, next time as well, I'll let you guys know. Um, I'll probably put another poll up. I can go into some more stuff about supplements or other nutrition bits. Or if we want to talk about programming, we want to talk about whatever. I'm uh, not bored of the sound of my own voice yet. Um, let me know. And uh, yeah. All the best, guys. Hope you were. Uh, I hope you all had a, a good week, enjoying the sunshine, and um, enjoy your weekends. And uh, see you all soon. Take care.